My, what a week it's been. I thought, you know what, Dr. Woods, all day yesterday until 9.30 last night, I thought yesterday was Wednesday. All day long, I thought yesterday was Wednesday. Till 9.30 last night when someone texted me and said, um, I think you forgot about me. I was supposed to be on your show tonight. I said, no, that's tomorrow night, Thursday night. They text back and said, today is Thursday. I'm like, how do, how do I go through the whole day thinking it's Thursday, a uh, Wednesday when it's Thursday, but that's kind of, she, she, she texted me back. It was Rebecca Walzer and I'll have her on tonight. Mm. She said, that's because it's been a very long week. And indeed it has. There is so much going on in the news. And I think about Gog Magog just in regards to Russia and China's recent meeting, right? And then regard to Saudi Arabia meeting recently with Iran, right? Yeah. And now we see Saudi Arabia might be moving back into Syria. Did you see that report? Yeah. By the way, Rebecca Walzer, you mentioned her. I was watching your interview with her. She knows about Ezekiel 38 and 39. She does. I did not. She mentioned it. She yeah, did. That, she did. That was neat. And you might have to coach her a little bit. She did call the book of Revelation the what book of Revelation. An S on the end, yeah. But, but she's yeah. Mo she's moving in the right direction. It's Absolutely wonderful. she is. Absolutely she is. And I did not know where she was coming from because I was in only interviewing her on economic issues. Yeah. And then she surprised me in a few interviews with some things she said. And so I texted her and I said, you sound like you have a, a, a church background, a, a, you know, a re religious background, maybe even an evangelical background. And she said, oh, yes, non-denominational, you know, church, teaching church, yeah. Bible, Bible church. So, yeah, she's, she's definitely tracking with us. And that, that's so which gives a lot more understanding to where she thinks things are going. And she and I, bo she and I both agreed. She was on the, the um, based on some of the things I said, which, and it was probably the way I worded it, she thought, I believe the events of Revelation were unfolding now. And I said, and she does it. And I said, let me, let me come back around and agree with you. I don't believe the events of Revelation are unfolding now either. You and I are both on agreement on that. I do not believe the events of Revelation are unfolding right now. I believe the stage is being set for them to begin unfolding. And so she's like, oh, well, then you and I do agree on that. So I thought that was even, perspective, right. I thought that was even per perceptive on her part that she was saying, I don't think the events of Revelation have started yet, but I think they're coming. And I said, no, 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 you and I are in absolute agreement. And it was probably the way I was wording it that made her sound like, I thought they were already happening, but you would agree with that. I don't think you believe the book of Revelation is being fulfilled yet, do you? No, we we uh, do not believe that because if it's if it's already happened, then we missed the rapture, <laughs> um, which I hope. Which which uh, not which the there case. might be a percentage of the audience right now saying, uh, "Duh, guys, <laughs> that's why yeah. your that's why your eschatology of rapture is off." But uh, we can all disagree on that. We'll just you know, right? They can but tell us we were right when we get raptured. But you can't have a chess game until someone takes the chessboard out of the game box and puts it on the table and sets up the pieces right. and the players take their respective positions. That's the era we're living in now where God is aggressively setting the stage. But by the way, with Rebecca Walzer, what a concept, a financial analyst that understands Bible prophecy. I know. You know, may her tribe increase. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right, so let's go to some of this because um, this is what we're talking about today. Uh, and our first, our, on our first point here is Gog Magog. So let's let's go on that. Tell me what you've got for me. I bet you got some news stories for me, don't you? Well, on that map earlier, you noticed that um, we had Persia circled. Persia is Iran, and so here's this article from All Arab News. It okay. talks about Iranian terror drones. You know, coming soon to a theater near you, the U.S. and Europe need to get far more serious about stopping Tehran before more, before more, far more serious attacks occur. So, you know, everybody's been sort of focused on, you know, the uh, Iranians on the precipice of getting their hands on the, the nukes. But here they the article demonstrates that they are very um, – uh, they have great facility, I should put it that way, in the area of drones. And we're talking about attack military drones. And so Iran is fitting directly into prophetic orbit because Ezekiel 38 predicts Iran, along with Russia and Turkey, is going to be one of the great um, invaders of Israel in the last days. So to set the stage for that, you have to have a bellicose, belligerent, and aggressive Iran, and that's exactly what you have in terms of their 
um, very close to crossing the nuclear finish line, and now the latest foray into uh, attack military drones. Mm. Do, do you know what happened last night in Syria related to Iran? I don't think I do. You might have to fill me in. U.S. retaliates with airstrike in Syria after iron or after Iranian drone strike kills U.S. contractor. Let me read the headline again. U.S. Mm. retaliates with airstrikes in Syria after Iranian drone strike kills U.S. contractor. One of the other headlines I put up last night actually referred to it. Here we go. U.S. contractor is killed in Iranian suicide drone strike. Well, what is it you're talking about? Iranian terror drones. And wow, here we go. Right now, we're talking about that very fact. If I can get back to the article. Talk about that very fact, an Iranian suicide drone. There you go. Yeah, and it's kind of interesting about Syria. Russia has had a presence in Syria for a while. And, of course, Russia is one of the invaders in the Ezekiel 38 prophecy. Mm. And that, that's just on Israel's northern border. And so since the prophecy indicates it's Russia and Persia, you know, involved, um, it doesn't really, you know, it's not really that surprising to discover that Iran also is creating mischief in Syria. Yeah, no, it sure doesn't. Um, Dr. Woods, you know, when you talk about this article, and we referenced this earlier in the week, what I said this article earlier in the week, Iranian terror drones coming soon to a theater near you. I said, uh, when I showed that to our audience, would, would, would Americans be shocked? And I think they would because they're not keeping, most Americans aren't keeping track of what's going on. Would they be shocked to find out that a massive um, death count was due to an Iranian drone coming over the Mexican border. Do you think the corrupt narco state of Mexico would allow Iran to come into Mexico and run drones out of there? I mean, if the narco drug state, which has a socialist Marxist president anyway, if a, if a narco state drug state like Mexico is allowing China to provide the precursor chemicals to make the fentanyl to bring into America, do you not think they would also allow Iranians or do they even have control to know who's there? Iran, because they basically are letting everybody and their grandmother come running through their country. I mean, it wouldn't take much for Iran to come into Mexico, and we already know they're over in Venezuela. We know they're already docking and having ships stop in Venezuela, and they're coming in great numbers from Venezuela into Mexico. What would it take for the Iranian suicide drones to be launched out of the borders of Mexico into the U.S. and kill huge people? Maybe they decide they want to... A, a, do a suicide drone attack on a church or, or, or a temple, a Jewish temple with full, full of people, full of people. Sure. And you interview regularly Todd Benzman. Yes. That's, that's the premise in one of his books that he did primary source research on that actually you have people of Persian or Middle Eastern and then Persian descent that have actually joined the lineage uh, or the line of people, you know, coming from Mexico into the United States. So you're not talking about some hypothetical. You're talking about something that has happened and currently is happening. And what did they just find a month ago? An Iranian tied back to, to the Islamic Revolutionary Guard, according to reports, in the trunk of a car. Now, why, when everybody else is just walking across the border and saying, hi, where's my meal and bus ticket? Why does this guy want to sneak in? What's, uh, unless his motives are nefarious or he is on the terror watch list and he is using fake papers. Oh, I'm sure the Iranian Islamic Revolutionary Guard would never create fake documents for someone. Well, he, they probably did. So why is he sneaking in? And in our list here, prophecy update, Gog Magog, that's, that Iran, I, that's Russia, Iran, Russia, Iran, and other nations coming together as a coalition against America. Uh, Dr. Woods, before we move to the next one, what other nations are there? Russia, Iran, Turkey, Syria. Am I missing any that could be in that Gog Magog coalition? Yeah, you have um, Central Asia. You would have the Sudan. You would have Libya. There's about nine nations total, uh, or nine names, I should say, that are mentioned in Ezekiel 38 and 39. But that, that map that was up there earlier... Uh, you'll see all the players. I think we got most of them. Okay. 
Well, let's move to the next one then, which is China. Of course, China, again, and Russia have been in the news a lot, uh, largely because the staged photo op of Putin and Xi Jinping with Xi Jinping in Moscow saying goodbye. And uh, Xi Jinping says, take care, my dear friend, and then tells him <coughs> that what we're about to do hasn't been done in 100 years, and we're driving it. Um, that makes me think they were probably speaking about the, the world order, because they're bragging a lot about changing the world order. One way to change the world order is to change the currency uh, or the world reserve currency, the petrodollar, that Russia and China seem to be building this uh, new currency uh, of their own that will be backed by a coalition of maybe other currencies, but certainly highly dominated by the yuan. And of course, all the central banks of the world are buying up gold at record numbers. Uh, gold, by the way, is now popped up. Uh, was It was popped up over 2,000. I don't know where it's at right now. I can check. But it's an indicator, folks, of, again, w what the average person is thinking, what investors are thinking, and what central banks are doing. But as we're on the air now, gold is at 1979 and silver's at 2320. So it's popped, silver's popped right up over $23. Well, the central banks are buying up massive amounts of gold because all of them are fighting to see who's going to get a central bank currency, maybe back to percentage by gold, or these central banks are just simply trying to preserve themselves. But the bottom line is the yuan, China, Russia, doing something that hasn't been done in 100 years, Dr. Woods, sounds like reinventing the entire economic face of the earth. What say you? Well, I think it's interesting that Ezekiel predicts Russia and Iran invading Israel. Now, Ezekiel 38 does not mention China, but I think China is locatable in Bible prophecy, arguably from the kings of the East that you see in Revelation 9 and Revelation 16. So I'm seeing Russia, Iran, and China um, involved in invading Israel different times in the timeline, but their goal is still the same. So therefore, any kind of headline that has those three uh, cooperating with each other, I think is clearly stage setting for the end time scenario. So that's why I sent you that article from AP News, March the 15th, that says China, Russia, and Iran hold joint naval drills in the Gulf, Gulf of Oman. And the article talks about how actually these three powers have been doing this kind of thing going back to 2019. So the truth of the matter is China, Russia, and Iran are working together preparing for war. Every American needs to understand that. And as our country you know, is busy debating pronouns and what the definition of a man is, what the definition of a woman is, the sworn enemies of America are working in tandem in preparation for war. Uh, here's the headline from the AP. You guys want to show that? China, Russia, Iran hold joint naval drills in Gulf of Oman. Uh, I saw a study the other day, Dr. Woods, where 60% of Americans think China's our greatest threat. And, and I'm glad Americans are coming up to speed, but it's still very naive because the greatest threat isn't China. The greatest threat is China, Russia, Iran, North Korea. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, That's right. you know, people are saying, well, I think Russia, I think China. I'm like, listen, our, uh, unfortunately, the American people are not being educated enough by the media uh, to know what's going on. And they don't realize all of these groups are in military alliance. They're an economic alliance. And now they're in military drills nonstop. Mm -hmm. I mean, Russia and China carried out the largest military exercise in world history in 2018, according to experts, Vostok 18. And then a couple months later, Iran joined in. But here are Americans saying, yeah, our greatest threat's Iran. Uh, no, your greatest threat is this coalition of nations. And you and I are in agreement on that. So let's go, yeah. to, the, let's go to the next one, uh, the next topic here. Um, which is, let's see, bring up your PowerPoint again. China, and probably most people know this, is moving not just in the direction of demanding total allegiance to the state, but they're demanding total allegiance to the leader oh, yeah. of China. Here's this headline uh, from Fox News you sent me. China ramping up persecution of Christians as it demands, quote, worship and allegiance, in quote, of Xi Jinping. Yeah, and, and they're clamping down on the house church movement, which is no front page news, but they're using 
um, the pandemic as an excuse for it because they want everyone to register with the official state church. And if you have some kind of house church that's not officially registered with the state church, they're, they're, they're able to recognize who's meeting and they want to clamp down on it. And to follow that word enough, the article talks about how they're using technology to literally scrub any vestige of Christianity off of Chinese uh, websites, media, social media, etc. cetera. Mm -hmm. So, of course, we've always known that our brothers and sisters, Christian brothers and sisters in China, have always been under severe persecution. But, but it just got kicked up a notch, if you can believe that. And it's in preparation for not just the worship of the state, but worship of the individual leader of China. Yeah. Let's go to the next one, anti-Semitism. Look at this article headline. We covered this as well, but it merits recovering. UN teachers call to murder Jews. That's what a new report. That's the UN. That's the UN for you. UN calls for murdering of Jews. That's what they're teaching. And this is, again, you know, it's kind of interesting that the uh, International Criminal Court wants to indict, uh, the globalist International Criminal Court wants to indict Putin on war crimes or whatever. And uh, Medvedev, Medvedev has come out and said, uh, you know, you guys think you're going to capture this guy? Uh, if you did, we'll, we'll bomb, we'll, we'll, we'll send some missiles to uh, the International Criminal Court. And I said on my newscast uh, that's for tonight, you know, you got to just sit back and smile when two disgusting groups of people are fighting at each other. Uh, Russia, uh, Russia, the leaders of Russia, not the Russian people, the leaders of Russia, Putin, who is just disgusting and evil. And then um, and then the, the International Criminal Court. I mean, who's more evil? Uh, I'm not sure. But I like the fact they want to tear each other up. Let them do it. Sit back when your enemies want to tear each other up. Just sit back and smile. Right, Dr. Woods? Yeah. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. Here's one. Anti-Semitism at school soccer match in Turkey. Tell me about this, please, Dr. Woods. Um, it's dealing with really a prestigious um, school in Turkey, and they had a, you know, a, a soccer match with a Jewish school, and the victorious team, in this case Turkey, ends, ends the match, not, not by the good old days when we used to, you know, shake the other team's hand on the way out, right? but, but giving the Nazi salute. The whole team gave the Nazi salute to the Jewish players. Mm, mm, mm. And the article is saying this is stunning because this is like a major uh, prestigious preparatory school. And I can't believe this thing is kind of thing is happening, the article says. But it's not surprising because when you look at that Gog Magog map again, you also see that one of the invaders of Israel is not just Russia, not just Iran, but also Turkey. And so if this is some sort of bellwether that Turkey is moving in more of an anti-Semitic direction, as is evidenced by something as simple as a soccer match and how a soccer match ends, Turkey, along with all of the other players that we've mentioned today, is falling right into prophetic orbit. Yeah. Wow. Really sad. All right. Globalism. Let's go to this next one. The rise of globalism. That's, that's next on our list, Dr. Woods. Let's talk about that. Well, this is something we've covered before, but it has to do with that meeting at the Trilateral Commission, yep. where they basically said, quote, this year, 2023, is year one of this new global order. Right. And to be frank with you, Brandon, I'm just so sick and tired of people. Every time we bring up the new world order, they say conspiracy theorist. Um, it's not a conspiracy theory. It's just reading comprehension. It's what it is. And it's not We're us just... that created that term. We didn't create that term, new new order or new world order. This was going back over 100 years ago by people like Alice Bailey or, or more modern time, George H. Bush from the Oval Office or standing behind the lectern on the, on the, in the uh, well at, on the ho house side of the U.S. Capitol. I mean, these are their words. These, these are the words of Gordon Brown former prime minister of Great Britain. These are the words of Tony Blair. These are the words of, of uh, Henry Kissinger. These are the words of Mikhail Gorbachev. And I can just keep going while the people have used the term new world order or new order. It's their words, not ours. We're just reporting what they're saying they want to do. Yeah, and one of the great mistakes of history is not taking dictators at their word. Yes. Think how different history would be if the world community had taken seriously the rantings of Adolf Hitler in Mein Kampf, you know, Hitler, Hitler telegraphed 
well in advance what he was going to do. And that's what that's what these people are. And I think it has something to do with the nature of evil. They're so confident that they become sort of um, loosey goosey as they get close to, you know, accomplishing their goal. And the fact that they're this open about it shows you how close they think they are towards laying the foundation for global governance. Yep. Here's here's another one as we move now to the segment on cashless society. Federal Reserve to launch instant payment service FedNow in July. We were talking about that last fall, saying that they were going to do it between May of this year and July. Well, now they've come out and said they're going to start this in July, which makes me believe, Dr. Woods, they're trying to forestall any bank collapses until July. What do you think? Or I should uh, say I, more, I, more bank collapses. We've already had some, but they're, they're trying to keep the whole system afloat till July. Yeah. And what's interesting about that article is it keeps using the word instant. It says it over and over again, instant payments with this FedNow system. And that's this is how this is being sold to the American people. It's for convenience. You know, think how easy life would be without cash. And they don't understand that when you move away from cash, you move away from personal freedom because now the government has a paper trail on everything that you spend your money on. And if you happen to be – your buying patterns happen to be inconsistent with some kind of preordained government narrative, then your social credit score goes down, and you're locked out of the system. And if you don't think this can happen, this is how the CCP keeps a tight rein on their massive population. It's through this cashless social credit score system. And if it happened in China, why couldn't it happen over the course of time, probably more sooner than later, right here in the late great United States of America? Um, absolutely. Absolutely. Last night I was interviewing Jessica from South Dakota, who's with uh, SD Canvassing. And she was, we got off into talking about economics. And she was saying that she knows people in South Dakota that are already buying and selling with each other with precious metals. Already. They're already doing that. And I would think that would be easy to do depending on what it is you're buying. Uh, you know, if you're buying, you know, a cow from a rancher and you're saying, you know, I need to slaughter that and have some steaks and fill my freezers full of meat, that'd be easy to do at the price, you know, cattle probably or other things. Hey, I don't know if they're bu buying hay from each other or what. I don't know what they're buying, uh, but I just know that between U.S. Silver Eagles and Gold Eagles, uh, she says she already knows people in South Dakota, which is a very agricultural-based state, uh, are already doing business with each other with gold and silver. Yeah, and you mentioned South Dakota. One of, one of the articles I sent you deals with um, Christy Neom. Yeah, here it is. Of South Dakota, and she basically – well, she did something really radical. She actually read the legislation before she signed it into law. To figure out what was in it. Yeah, and let me what just let me just give you a little background there because sure. we talked about that. What yeah. happened is the people of South Dakota, the America First, the grassroots, the patriots, they informed, they informed the legislature. Members of the legislature started working on legislation to um, to counter or to make aware members of the legislature that they're about to pass a piece of legislation that would outlaw the use of any kind of uh, cryptocurrency other than what the Federal Reserve wants. And yeah. the grassroots alerted key members of the legislature, key members of the legislature and the public, then put so much pressure on the governor that Jessica last night said that the governor told someone, can you tell the people to please stop calling now? So, mm. in other words, I appreciate the governor doing what she did, and I appreciate her going on Tucker Carlson and warning about 19 other states doing this. But the point I want to make is that the leadership came from what I'm told, and it's on video of Jessica saying it last night, that the leadership came from the people. The leadership and the message came from the grassroots people and some key members in the legislature that started driving this bus. And that is, I think that should be encouraging that we have to be the government because we are the government and make these people do what we want them to do. Would you agree? Yes, and we should keep it up because yes. there's 19 other states where they're doing this. And real quick, it has to do with the, the 
changing of the definition of commerce via the uh, what's called the UCC, the um, uh, uh, oh my goodness, I forgot the name, Unif Uniform Commercial Code. That's right, Uniform Commercial Code, changing the definition of tender or currency to ban Bitcoin, as you talked about, and accept only the digital currency that the government wants to bring in, which opens the door to CBDCs, which is a digitized system of currency, which moves us in the direction of cashless. And the reason we're bringing this up in a prophecy update is Revelation 13, verses 16 through 18, as clearly as it can be predicted, predicts a coming system that's essentially cashless, where the government is able to lock you out of the economy um, if your buying patterns or habit of life you know, is politically incorrect. And so we're seeing the foundation of this whole thing being laid right now. And thank God for the people of South Dakota that rose up, and thank God for a receptive governor, Christy Nome, that vetoed the legislation we just need that to happen in 19 other states. And by the way, most of these states where this is happening, this redefinition of currency, it's happening in red states. So just because you live in a red state, don't think you're somehow, you know, safe and secure from this uh, currency re redefinition. Yeah. We just got an interesting email, Dr. Woods, from our friend Robert in the UK. Robert's a longtime listener live in the UK. He said... Um, he believes and has reason to believe that Putin's invasion of Ukraine is shipping access from Rostov on Don past Crimea through Turkey to the Mediterranean. This is to attack Israel because the land route is blocked by mountains. Andy Woods has just said that Turkey joins Russia in the Gog Magog war, which exactly fits the strategic side of the Ukraine war. Because if he is trying to get shipping access, past Crimea and through Turkey to the Mediterranean and Turkey's involved, he's like, wow, Dr. Woods is helping us understand with the information Robert's now providing that, again, when we look at some of the things happening in the world, we don't realize that there are prophetic scenarios and the stage is being set for yeah. certain things to happen, which have to happen, or we believe a lie. We, we, not one prophecy can go unfulfilled, can it? No, and, and it's just a matter of looking at the Old Testament prophecies fulfilled in the first coming. The stage was set for those as well. You know, right, let me give you one example, right down to the piercing of the Messiah. Um, that, the stage had to be set for that because the way the Jews executed people was through stoning. So how in the world is the Messiah supposed to be pierced? Well, Rome set the stage for the piercing by coming into the land of Israel about 63 BC, over six decades before Jesus was ever born. And they brought back into life the method of execution that was created by the Assyrians. The Romans just popularized it, called the crucifixion. And had Rome not taken away Israel's right to execute her own criminals, the stage would not be set for the crucifixion and for the multiple prophecies indicating that the Messiah had to be pierced. So my point is, if this can happen related to first advent prophecies, why why couldn't like the scenario that I guess his name is Robert, um, the scenario he lays out, why can't we also put that in the category of stage setting for the second coming of Christ? Right. Absolutely. Uh, what else do we have on our agenda, Dr. Woods? Well, let's see. We finished uh, the digital currency. You know, persecution, of course, is breaking out worldwide. Um, well, let's skip. We the, know the. Let's skip the go, Babylon go for the sake of time, if you don't mind. Sure, sure. We, we know the persecution. That's obvious to all of us, right? I want to get sure. to the Babylon one because that's so fascinating. What's the latest you have on Babylon? Well, this deals with the um, a historic uh, visit from um, the U U UNESCO director went and visited Babylonia with the idea of let's take her ancient culture and bring it back to life. Oh, wow. That's essentially what the visit was about. Well, again, it's moving fast. And then when we talk about that uh, port they're building, right, that's, yeah. uh, that's really something else as well. All right, let's take some phone calls, folks. I mean, let's start out with Kathy. 
Kathy, line one. Kathy, thanks for calling in today, Kathy. Good morning or good afternoon or whatever. Yes, yes. I wanted to ask Dr. Woods. I agree Babylon is Babylon, uh, but how does he get around the fact that God says Babylon will never be rebuilt? Ah. Yeah, that's a common question. Um, the prophecies in Isaiah 13 and 14 and Jeremiah 15 and 51, which say Babylon will never be rebuilt, is dealing with um, Babylon yet future. In other words, Babylon has to be destroyed cataclysmically so that those prophecies can be fulfilled. And so obviously they've never been fulfilled because they are rebuilding Babylon. There are people living in Babylon today. So Babylon has to be brought back to life so that she can be destroyed in the seventh uh, bowl judgment in fulfillment of Isaiah 13 and 14 and Jeremiah 50 and 51. And from that point in time forward, Babylon will never be rebuilt. So the prophecy that she will never be rebuilt is actually a futuristic prophecy. It's never been fulfilled. And so that prophecy actually helps my view, you know, that Babylon has to play a role in the end times. Okay, so it's not the Babylon of the old times. That's correct. Okay, thank you for your help. You're very welcome. You're going to say something else, Dr. Woods? Well, I was going to say uh, the Babylon of old, when it was destroyed uh, by the Persians in 539, it was actually never destroyed. When you study how Babylon fell to the Persians, and by the way, this happened in Daniel you know, chapter 5, um, what you learn when you study Herodotus and the Cyrus Cylinder and a lot of sort of artifacts of the time period is that there was never a battle when Babylon fell to the Persians in 539. In fact, the Babylonians were captured without a war. So the prophecies of cataclysm have never been fulfilled. And obviously, beyond that, the prophecies that she will never be rebuilt again have never been fulfilled either, because there's people living in Babylon right now as I speak. So we this is part of the argument that we use to, you know, argue for a future cataclysmic destruction during which time she will never be rebuilt again. So we put those yet future. I want to I jump that helps. I want to jump real quick to line four because I, I like I like this question. Jason in Arizona, line four. Go ahead, Jason. Hi, Brandon. Forgive Hi. me. Um, kind of off topic, kind of on. I've been trying to get you hold holy all week on this because we've been talking about the alien thing. Yes. I have a friend, Brandon, who in 1977 was stationed at Shemya Air Force Base in Alaska. He had encounters with these, they're, what they are, Brandon, by their own admission, because he had more, this is not an abduction, this is, he worked with them there, worked with them. He, they're, they were thrown down from heaven by God. Those were his words. Uh, he, he named them baritone, um, explained about the abductions, explained about uh, how they can so-called mind control, how human minds are very frail. He got a tour inside the craft, not only uh, actually by the human pilots of these things. So humans and what they are, Brandon, they're, they're more like fallen angels in the flesh. Okay, um, let me get they're Dr. more Woods like you to, and I, and yeah, they're me, stuck on this planet. Let me get Dr. Woods to respond. Well, we've been doing a series because of the Pentagon paper, March 7th, 2023, saying that there's a mothership between Earth and Sun, and they're sending probes to Earth, which I was in showing that the occultic writers have been saying this now for several decades and that this would be used to explain away the rapture. And they're talking about removing people, and they're uh, talking about, you know, we're waiting for a new Jesus. Jesus was the leader, of basically, of the age of the Pisces. Now we're looking for the next Jesus, if you will, for the age of Aquarius. So I've been talking about the fact that I think these are demons, what they're seeing, and it's fitting right in with what the, you know, the, the occultists are telling us, uh, as they claim to be channeling extraterrestrials. Well, you and I know they're ch- channeling demons. What are your thoughts about, pe- you know, what the caller just said? Well, I agree with your assessment that the only extraterrestrials that the Bible mentions are angels. And we know that a third of them fell with Satan in his initial rebellion. Revelation 12, verses 3 through 8 indicates that. And so these fallen angels or demons are essentially preparing humanity for Satan's ultimate work, where he will manifest himself through the coming Antichrist. And so this is just another example of stage setting 
where people are being conditioned to speak to entities that they think are more highly evolved ascended masters. But the reality of the situation is they're speaking to demons who are masquerading as ascended masters, preparing virtue signalers um, to usher the human race into global, uh, the next global evolutionary step, which is paving the way for the Antichrist system. Frank, line two. Frank, thanks for calling in today, Frank, line two. Yeah, great subject. Hi, Dr. Woods. My question is, with all of the, we know the rapture's coming soon with everything that's happening. So what, I, I kind of deal with percentages, but basically everything that's happened so far, does everything have to be completed before the rapture starts? So then my thought is that it's being stage is being set, but yet I think when the rapture does happen, the rest of it all fall into place and then the prophecy will be fulfilled as it goes through the tribulation. Dr. Woods? Well, the signs of Christmas indicate that Thanksgiving is near <laughs> because <laughs> Thanksgiving occurs earlier on the calendar than Christmas. So we don't really think there's a specific prophetic sign that has to be fulfilled before the rapture. It's an eminent event. Can it happen at any moment? But because we're seeing, as we've talked about on this show, the world being prepared for the tribulation period. If the rapture comes before the tribulation period, and it does, the rapture must be coming, you know, very, very rapidly. And we should use that knowledge to use what waning time we have left Absolutely. on Earth. Absolutely. 